Hey guys, the Peddler back with another video. Today I'm going to be doing a comparison between a cheap Zwift setup and an expensive Zwift setup. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. If you guys are a first time viewer on my channel, I highly suggest you like this video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps with me putting out content and the overall growth of this channel, which in the long run is just going to help me make better content for viewers of mine. So if you could do that, it'd be greatly appreciated. For everyone that already subscribes and likes these videos, I just want to say a big thank you. We've officially passed the 500 subscriber mark, which is a pretty big milestone in a small YouTuber's career. So I just want to give everyone that's been helping me a big thank you. It really encourages me to push through and just make more content. And in the not so distant future, as the channel grows and the support grows, uh, just the amount of content and the type of content uh, and the quality of the content is just going to improve as well. So it's really good to see that we see some positive growth uh, in this channel. I also forgot to mention, if you guys do want to follow me on Instagram or Strava, links in the description below. I do plan on posting my rides and my training. So if you guys do want to stay up to date with that, feel free to follow me on those platforms. So the reason why I wanted to make this video was I wanted to see what you actually get with the more money you spend in terms of your Zwift setup. I actually made one of my first videos on this channel. Uh, it was called a cheap Zwift setup or the cheapest Zwift setup. Uh, it has 36,000 views. So it was really well reciprocated and it probably helped a lot of people get into Zwifting. So I thought it'd be a good time to really see what has changed in terms of the amount of money you spend. Do you get a better overall Zwift experience? And just to see if the more money you spend, the better quality and better experience you get. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So we're going to start off with the cheap Zwift setup and follow basically somewhat of the guidelines that I made in my first video of a cheap Zwift setup back in 2017. But it's going to start off with a fluid trainer. Now you might be asking, what is a fluid trainer? And what a fluid trainer is, I'll show you guys a picture right here, is that you have your actual rear wheel on the roller part of the trainer. And there's fluid inside and basically the harder you push the harder you spin uh, the harder the fluid is inside the trainer to move the roller that your tire is sitting on and that that's what creates the resistance so it's all dependent on how hard you're pushing now that's kind of hard to understand so i'll show you guys an actual representation you can see the rear wheel spinning and it's spinning on the trainer's roller and the harder you are spinning the harder it is going to be to move that roller because the fluid is going to get disrupted and create more uh, tension, more um, harder resistance basically. So that's what a fluid trainer is. And we have the cheapest one. And I want to say this before the video, you can find a lot of the things I'm going to mention at a discounted price. If you guys do buy secondhand, I've done it in the past. So I'm not trying to say you can't. This is just if you're technically going brand new for the setups, this is what it would cost. So just bear that in mind. You could totally find some good deals secondhand. So just putting that out there. So for the cheap fluid trainer, you're looking at 249 USD. Now the next thing you're going to need for the setup is a speed and cadence sensor. So basically what those do is because you don't have a smart trainer, which is going to communicate with your computer or your iPhone. In this situation, you need a computer. You can't use an iPhone because the fluid trainer doesn't have any Bluetooth capabilities. So the Garmin speed and cadence sensor is basically going to attach on your crank, which is going to give you the cadence and the speed sensor is going to go on your back wheel. So when your back wheel is actually spinning, um, that information and along with the cadence sensor is going to be uploaded to Zwift, um, through the ANT dongle that we're going to talk about. And that basically creates something called Z power, which is Zwift's uh, way of calculating roughly what your power would be. So it's not very accurate because obviously it's not a smart trainer, but it's as best as you know, you can do when things are not a smart trainer, right? Like this is a fluid trainer with resistance coming from fluid, right? So it's not as accurate as the engineering that you get on a smart trainer that has built in resistance, right? So that's what, uh, that's what speed and cadence sensor is. And then we move on to the ANT uh, dongle. So I'm sticking with Garmin. There's other brands that make it such as Wahoo, I'm pretty sure, but the, this is the ANT dongle. So these two sensors, the cadence and speed uh, sensor communicate with, even they communicate with your, um, uh, head unit with ANT. So ANT is kind of like Bluetooth. It's just a way of devices communicating. And that's what the ANT dongle is going to do is that if this is plugged into your computer, that's how the information from your speed and cane sensor is going to travel to your computer. And then from your computer is going to talk to Zwift. So that's what the dongles needed. Now, you know, for me, I'll give you guys an example. My bike's over here and my computer is over here. So there's pretty much a lot of room. So the connection can be pretty bad. So what you actually end up having to do, I'm looking down because I'll show you guys what I have is basically I have um, 
a USB extender. So basically you plug the extender into your computer, you plug the ANT dongle into the extender and you pull it all the way to the back of your bike where you have it, right? So in this situation, you're looking at the ANT dongle being $48.49 USD and then the USB extender is $2.45. So that's basically that. Now, in terms of the riser block, you're gonna need a riser block because the fluid trainer is gonna have an offset. So you're gonna have to offset the front of your bike, which is the front wheel. So the riser block is $12.99 USD. These are all USD prices. And then you're gonna need a fan. So you can either use two fans. I have a two fan setup. One for like my left side, one for my right side. Uh, and because they're small, I find it's pretty good. Obviously, I would like an industrial fan, which I will show you. But for two fans, you're looking at $45.98. Uh, now, in terms of the bigger fan, if you just want one big fan, uh, you're looking at $60 USD. Um, and then for computer wise, so because, like I said, because we have to use ANT, there's no Bluetooth, you're going to have to use a computer. Now in the, in the expensive Zwift setup, you could use your phone. However, I'm going to explain why I don't include that in my expensive Zwift setup. But, uh, in this situation, you're going to need a laptop. Um, that's probably going to be the cheapest. Now in terms of different specs, like I said, you can find, you know, used gaming PCs, used laptops. So I'm not saying this is the only one, but for brand new Lenovo IdeaPad, uh, this one retails for around $229 and it runs Zwift from what I can tell. So you, you would be fine. And for that price, it's pretty good. Um, and then basically guys, you're going to take your, uh, you know, uh, USB extender, plug it into the Lenovo plug the ANT into the extender, you're going to put this on your bike and then you're going to have this on the trainer. So that's basically the cheap Zwift, Zwift setup. And if you guys do really want to see an uh, in-depth look, I will link my video where I talk about the whole setup that I had back in 2017. The video has 36,000 views, so it has helped a lot of people get on Zwift if budget was an issue. So I'm really proud of that video. And then the last point for the Zwift setup is it's $14.99 for a monthly subscription for Zwift. So every month you're gonna have to pay $14.99. So in total, this Zwift setup, this cheap Zwift setup uh, would be 673 uh, USD, which I think is pretty good to get some decent indoor training. I remember when I would use this setup, um, it was better than nothing. Now, one thing I'm gonna note going forward for the expensive Zwift setup is basically, once you go go to the expensive Zwift setup, you can't go back. So I'll tell you an, an experience right before we jump into it. So really quickly, I'll tell you guys about my experience. So I was running the cheap Zwift setup and then I had the ability to go on a semi-smart trainer. So it was kind of like a fluid trainer, but it had the capability of having the resistance changed automatically through uh, Bluetooth and ANT with Swift. So it communicated. I'm gonna make a video. If you guys do wanna see a moderate Zwift setup, uh, in the medium of both, please like this video and subscribe to the channel and comment if you guys would like to see that. But basically, I had a decent smart trainer. It was like a smart slash fluid trainer and it controlled the resistance for me where, like I said, on the true fluid trainer, on the cheap Zwift setup, you have to push harder if you want to go faster, right? So as soon as I used that and experienced like when I was climbing on Zwift, the resistance automatically changed. I was totally blown away because I was like, oh my God, this is so much more immersive. So I couldn't go back to using the fluid trainer. So it was actually funny. I basically stopped Zwifting for like a good two months and it wasn't until I bought my smart trainer that I started Zwifting again because I just, it was, you just couldn't go back. It just was not the same. It made me like depressed to go back on the fluid trainer. Like I said, if that's the only thing you have, I used it for more than a year and a half. So I did what I had to do, but smart trainer, I feel like is the way to go. So now we're looking at the expensive Zwift setup. Now this is the fun part of the video. If you guys do like geeking out or just seeing how far you can push the limits, I made actually three setups. So we're looking at the kicker products because they have a good integration between all the units in terms of them being compatible. And that just increases the price. We want to see the most expensive Zwift setup. So we're looking at the kicker smart. This retails for a thousand one hundred ninety nine USD. And uh, you can see if you guys aren't familiar with a direct drive, the rear wheel is no longer going on a roller. It is directly attached to the unit and the gradient is automatically changed. It has a flywheel. So I'm not going to go too in depth if you guys are not familiar with what a smart trainer is, but basically it's a smart trainer. Now, the next thing you're going to get is the kicker climb. Now I made a video on my channel of why you probably shouldn't get one or need one. So I'll play the video right here. Basically what it does is that it changes the elevation on the front end. So it'll actually make it feel like you're climbing. So in terms of the gradient, if it goes to 6%, you're, you start going up and then if it goes back down, so it creates a good realism 
And then at that point you have no wheels on the, your indoor setup, which is crazy. So that retails for $599. The next thing you would probably get is the kicker headwind. Uh, this is controlled by Bluetooth fan. So it actually goes off based on your heart rate. So the harder you go, the more wind will push out and the less hard you go, it can go down, but then you can automatically adjust it too. I still like having a fan on me, even if I'm not going hard, um, but it is a really cool feature. Now that's an expensive fan, $249 USD, when compared to a $40 uh, two fan setup or the $60 industrial fan. So that's pretty expensive, but yet again, it's pretty cool that it's controlled by uh, Bluetooth. Now in this setup, guys, I wanna use the best graphics that you can get out of Zwift, which is gonna to have to be on a PC or computer. You're not gonna get the best graphics on um, your iPad or on your uh, phone. So in this setup, you could use your phone and save some money, but in this situation, in this setup, I wanna use a computer. So for that reason, we're still gonna to have to get the Antine dongle, which is $48.49. You see how I didn't mess that up. Um, then you're gonna to have to get the extender, which is $2.45. Now, this is where it gets interesting, guys. I found out about this recently. I don't know if, if you guys know about this, but there's something called a rocker plate. And basically what a rocker plate does, we'll watch the video here, just can't watch too long, is that it basically, if we watch him ride, so he basically has a sort of setup we're talking about right now. And you can see how it creates a side to side motion. And that's one thing that you don't get indoors is that out in the road, you have the sway from left and right because you're not fixed. It's very dynamic. We're inside because there's no movement, you're fixed. And that can be kind of uncomfortable because then you're not engaging certain parts of your body. So what this kicker plate does or what this plate does is that it'll actually rock the whole unit side to side, which is really cool to see. Now, what's not really cool to see is the price tag. But then again, if you're paying for realism, that's what's going to happen. So for this setup, um, it's going to cost 599 USD. So if we look at some other pictures of it, you can see that it's basically just wood with some rocker plates. Um, and then you can have some uh, in the video you can see where you actually fix down the 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 Wahoo kicker which is your smart trainer but they have different options so that is five hundred and ninety nine dollars guys pretty expensive now in terms of the gaming PC I could have gone crazy and gone for a ten thousand dollar computer but that's not the goal of this it's just to show that you know if you get a moderately expensive computer you'll probably get the best performance uh, then again Swift is not a, a PC or it, it's not a gaming. A PC game in terms of needing high uh, refresh rate or high graphics. So I went with an Alienware uh, computer retails for $2,099. So just a general gaming PC and you're going to need a monitor for that as well. So we just went with an MSI, which is $219. So in total, oh, and you need the Zwift $15 a month fee. So for one month with this setup, you're looking at a grand total of $5,000. $30.97. So that's pretty expensive. So uh, we just went from the cheap Zwift setup from what I can remember, which was $673.39 uh, USD. And now we're at $5,030.97 USD. So that's pretty expensive. But guess what, guys? That is not the most expensive Zwift setup. We can actually go more expensive. And this is what I love about making these videos is that it's so interesting to see the different products and to see how far or how extreme you can take something. So, uh, and then at the end, I'll give you guys my true thoughts between everything, just to give you guys an overall picture. But I just love looking into stuff and really figuring out what's out there and uh, just seeing what setups you can really create, right? So I love making these videos. I hope you guys are appreciating the videos. Um, so we're looking at... Now, this is the second most expensive uh, Swift setup. It is not the most expensive. So we're looking at the kicker bike. So if you guys aren't familiar, uh, Wahoo and Tax have uh, smart bikes, which basically means that once the unit's set up, you don't need to take your bike off ever to ride outdoors. You can have your outdoor bike for outdoor riding and you have your indoor smart bike that stays in fixed in place. And it's kind of cool because if other people are using it within your household, you can just tweak some things around. Um, then again, it could be kind of tricky because it'd be kind of annoying to always change uh, different parts around like the stem length and all that stuff. I find it just having a smart trainer would be easier because people would just bring their own bike. But you know, there is still a market, I guess, for people that want a smart bike. So here it is. So the Wahoo Kicker bike retails for $3,499 USD. That is expensive. Um, but it, I'm not going to go too in depth in a smart bike. It's pretty cool. I've seen some videos on it. If you guys do want to see me talk about it, comment if you guys do want to see that now we're going to add the kicker fan 
I'm not too sure if it automatically connects. I'm pretty sure it would because this connects to your heart rate monitor more so. So that's an additional $249 USD. Now we're going to include the rocker plate we already talked about, which creates the side to side motion because you don't get that. It's still fixed into place. So the rocker plate for the, the tax uh, ta kicker or tax bike, which is the bike we're currently looking at is an additional $649 USD. That is expensive. Now, like I said, we want the best graphics, so we're gonna go with a gaming PC. So you need the AMT uh, dongle, which is gonna be $48.49. You're gonna need the extender, which is $2.45. You're gonna need the gaming PC, 2,099 USD. You're gonna need the, the monitor, which is an additional $219. And you're gonna need the monthly subscription to Zwift, which is $15. So you're looking at a grand total. I, I will edit an actual drum roll because that, that was bad. Ready? Okay. And it is $6,782.96 USD. That is expensive. We just went from 5,000 to almost uh, $7,000. So that's basically the second most expensive Swift setup. Now you might be asking, look, Peddler, how are we going to get more expensive than that because that is ludicrous. I was thinking of just getting a moderate or cheap Zwift setup and now you're telling me there's something more expensive than $7,000? And the answer is yes. Yes, there is. So this was extremely hard to find and I guess it's only available in the Netherlands. I could be wrong, but it is the Tax Magnum Smart Trainer. It is basically a smart trainer that is a treadmill. So it's a smart treadmill and basically um, it retails for $9,182 USD. Now, if you guys do want to see a video, we have the lovely Peter Sagan on the bike or on the trainer with the bike. So if we actually see the part of the video, um, he's doing some wheelies because he is Sagan. Now he hops on the trainer and starts riding just like he would be outdoors. And you can actually see uh, as the grading increases, the whole unit goes up and the whole unit goes down. I think it's pretty standard to what you would see. Like that's pretty cool for indoor riding. Like I'm not going to lie. Um, but it's pretty much what you would see on an expensive or moderately expensive normal um, treadmill for running. Like the treadmills I've been on go up, go down. You can simulate increased um, grading. So I'd be really curious to do a test between a normal uh, treadmill versus this treadmill. But it does retail for $9,182 USD. And I guess the market demand wasn't that big over here in North America. And that's why they probably went with the smart bikes instead of this, just because there's an increased risk, I guess, of people hurting themselves because it's pretty easy to lose your balance. So I think the smart bike was a better decision in terms of what consumers would probably want. Now tax claims that it comes with its own PC that runs its own software, but we got to make sure this is compatible with Swift. So we're going to have to go with the typical Zwift setup to make this the most expensive Zwift setup. So you got to include the AT dongle. That's an additional $48. You got to include the USB extender. That's an additional $2. You got to include the game PC, $2,099. You got to include the monitor, $219. The Zwift monthly subscription, $15. And I don't see any fans here. So an additional two fans, which is $45. Now the grand total for the most expensive Zwift setup is... $11,611 USD. Let that sink in for a second. $11,000, almost $12,000 USD. That is insane. We went from a cheap Zwift setup, which was roughly around $700, and we got all the way up to $12,000. Now, you can really see the big contrast between immersiveness. From the video, I'd say that's pretty cool and I would love to actually try riding on a treadmill and probably, you know, the tax treadmill because even though it's probably modeled after your typical treadmill, which is nowhere near $9,000, uh, there are probably some tweaks that make it a little bit nicer, but um, I know it has some sensors on the side, so if your wheels did slip back uh, as if you were losing traction or losing, uh, you know, keeping yourself upright, the, the treadmill would stop. Or on a traditional treadmill, it doesn't have that. You would have to like pull the cable. But uh, in terms of just functionality, I think it's very similar. I don't think they did anything spectacular uh, in terms of changing it from a normal treadmill to a cycling uh, road bike uh, treadmill. I think it's really cool. Now, if you guys want to hear my overall thoughts. Now, from the cheap Zwift setup, I don't think uh, that's the nicest setup, especially if you're spending a lot of time in the trainer. So I said this previously in my videos. I've spent roughly almost 10,000 kilometers now indoors. 
um, just for training and it can get pretty boring and I have a moderate to more expensive Zwift setup, nothing crazy, but I do have a nice smart trainer and I myself find it pretty static, pretty boring at times. So I can only imagine how I used to feel on the cheap Zwift setup. So I feel like the cheap Zwift setup is like if you're trying to get one, two days out of the week in Zwift or you're just riding maybe 25, 30 minutes a day every day, uh, it's pretty bearable, but anything more than that, it's going to get pretty boring, pretty unimmersive. So uh, the cheap Zwift setup, I'm not really a fan of. Now, the more expensive Zwift setup where we start talking about the Wahoo kicker climb and, you know, the fan and all that stuff uh, and the rocker play, I don't feel that that's totally necessary. Like I said, I've put 10,000 kilometers in Zwift with a basic expensive, moderately expensive uh, setup. So I don't find that it needs to be that immersive. Now that would help me. I, I'm not disagreeing with that, but do I need it? No. So I find for myself, it's a balance between a moderate to a low expensive Zwift setup, which if you guys do want to see my setup, my current setup, or just how I would design a moderate Zwift setup, um, please leave a like or subscribe to the channel and comment that you'd like to see that. I would love to make a video like that. And it's really important because I find that I have enough experience on Swift after using it for multiple of years and really seeing from going from a cheap Swift setup to seeing and you know doing the research to find the most expensive Swift setups. I think I'd be really capable of making a moderate Swift setup pretty much similar to what I have right now and just tell you guys what I would suggest uh, investing in because this is a long-term investment. My smart trainer at the time was I think $2,000 if not $1,800. Um, and I've had it for three years now. So I knew that going into that purchase that it was going to be a long-term investment and it's honestly paid off. Uh, the fact I've ridden more than I think 1500 kilometers on the trainer, if not more, I would say, um, is crazy because that just shows that I really have gotten the use out of it. And that's the whole point of my channel is all about value, all about getting what you uh, should get out of uh, a product rather than buying something, thinking that you're going to do something with it or thinking that, it's something that you need rather than maybe you want and really figuring out based on what type of riding, based on training that you do, what is the best suited for you. So if you guys do want to see that type of content, you know what to do. I'd be more than welcome to show you guys my setup and give you guys suggestions for a moderate Zwift setup. And that basically wraps it up between the cheap Zwift setup and the most expensive Zwift setup. So if you guys did find that interesting, I hope you did. I thought it was really fun making and really looking at the different levels. And that's about it. So until the next one, keep on pedaling.